Pesca influence. Okay, so a little recap of what we did in class. Okay, last week. Let me just cast our slides a bit back. Okay, so that we can look at what we did in class last week. Okay, so we started with um, the special probability dis distributions and uh, notably among them was uh, the binomial and uh, the normal distribution, okay? And we said for a normal distribution, you have to find a, the probability, okay, of the process. Then first we standardize the random variable X, okay, to obtain the standard normal variable, which has a mean of zero and a variance of one. Okay, and we said that to do that, okay, the key clue here is, or the clue here is to standardize, you subtract the mean of the process, okay, from the given value of X and divide by the standard deviation. Okay, so that is a rule. And we said that once we, uh, we standardize the normal variable, we can then go and read the cumulative distribution, okay, to the given point. A or to the given point X. Okay. And uh, we also read, took some example about three examples and read the probability distribution. So we look at this example, okay, and we looked at various aspects, reading less than, and then reading uh, probability greater than a given value of X. And also, we also looked at uh, looking at the probability between two values, okay? Uh -huh. We looked at all that in class. Uh, typical example, another example we looked at, okay, in all three aspects was this particular example. And the uh, key, okay, knowledge from that class was uh, reading of the standard normal tables, okay, which we took our time to explain and uh, to read. And I'm sure on your own, you would have practiced how to, to read okay, the standard normal table. And I believe everybody has a standard normal table, okay, at their end before starting this class. Then again, I ask you to uh, download a T table, okay? So we are supposed to have our T tables with us for this particular class. Okay, so now let's continue with our Saska inference, okay. And I, I remember for your particular for your class in particular, uh, we even started something on the um, Saska inference in the sense of sampling distribution, okay. And um, we also did we did mention, okay, that we usually make uh, okay deduction from sample data to okay make guesses about the entire population and um, examples of some sample statistics are the sample mean which is x bar okay, which is an estimate of the population mean so we did mention that x bar is an estimate okay so we we wrote that whenever you see mu with a cap we mean this is an estimate of this okay uh, so X bar is, this is the proper notation. So X bar is an estimate, it's equal to this. But this one is an approximate, okay, estimate of this. It can never be equal to the true value. But as much as possible, we'll try to obtain a best estimator for the population B. The same way we also have sample standard or sample variance S squared, which is also Okay, an estimator of sigma squared. Mm -hmm. We did mention that in class. So once again, it has a cap on it. Okay, and that is an estimate for the population variance, which we did mention. Okay, very good. So we also look at the formulas for the sample mean and then the sample variance. And we, we I mean, made some notice that um, in the sample, okay, variance, the formula changes a bit uh, from X minus mu, okay, 
x minus mu to x minus x bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we, we always know it's a deviation, but that in the sample variance, the deviation for the sample mean. Okay, so we take note of that. And again, then again, in the sample variance, the denominator is over the sample size minus one, not over capital N. Okay, uh, so those are key things we we derive or we took notice in the in our previous lecture. Okay, and, uh, I remember we also solved uh, an example on that. Okay, just to know how to calculate it. Yes. So before we go on to before we go on to, I think we should look at an example. We've done that in class last week. But you let's just calculate. Let me give you data. Find the sample, the sample variance for me. Okay, so calculate it at your end and find the sample variance. So I'm giving you this data set. Uh, let me have 2.5. Okay, and then let's have uh, three. Let's have three points. Two, then let's have 2.7. So find the sample variance. I want you to find S squared for me. So do it at your end. I'm giving you about five minutes to do that. Yeah, are we done? Class, when you are done, just give me a guess on the a chart page, okay, so that I can take your answers. So when you finish, give me a year on the chart page. Yeah, so to find a variance, you create the columns X, okay, X minus X bar, and then X minus X bar squared. Then write your observations, which are the X 2.5, 3, 3.2, and then what? And two point what? Two point seven. Okay. 
Then the next thing is you need to find the, the x bar, which is the mean of the sample. Okay. So we have 2.5 plus 3. Mm -hmm. So x bar is what? S by 2.5 plus 3. Oh, you just give me your answer for the X bar. Okay, type it for me. So 3.2 plus 2.7. Okay, all over. All over. So all over. Four. So, I have four. So, I Oh, Salim, let me, you have to divide by four. Hmm? Bismarck, you also have to divide your mean by four. So when you add and then you have to divide by four. Hmm? Good. Then once we are done, we'll subtract the 2.4, okay, from each of this observation. So 2.5 minus 2.4 will be 0 0.1. 3 minus 2.4 will be what? 0 0.6. 3.2 minus 2.4 is going to be what? 0 0.8. And then 2.7 minus 2.4 will be 0 0.3. Okay. Somebody is saying that mean is 2.85, not 2. Point, uh, yeah, it can't be 2.4. It's it, it it has to be 0. 0.85. Okay. So let's clean these calculations. Okay, and clean this side. So Mr. Savali says, Salim says it's two points. The mean is 2.85. I have 2.85 is correct. The mean cannot be 2.4. Okay, so then we do the subtraction. So 2.5, so do the subtraction from here and give me the values, okay? So here will be 0 0.35. This will be 0 0.15. Okay, this will be 0 0.37. Uh, that will be 3.5. So do the calculation at your end, eh? Uh -huh. let, the, let me just use that to cross check. So 0. point what? One five, but this should be negative. No, no, no. Yeah, this should be negative, 0. 0.15. Yeah, so we have... <laughs> X minus S bar, can you give me the answers? I'm waiting for them. Mm -hmm. 2.5 minus 2.85. Okay, thank you, Salim. So next you are going to, we have to square it. Okay, square it from your end and give me the answers. So the first one, when we square, what do we get?
Okay, so Salim says zero point one two two five. Oh, why are you always having conflicting results? Ah, okay. The next one is what? Zero point zero two two five. Yes, Salim, next one. Zero point one two two five. You can check your answers. Then the final one will also be zero point zero two two five. Okay. Then after that, we have to sum everything. Okay. So let's sum everything up. So we have 0 0.29, okay, good. So that will give us the numerator, uh, the numerator in this formula here. So the summation we just did is for the numerator. So that is 0 0.29 over n is four. So we have four minus one, which will be three. Right, yeah. so you calculate 0 0.29 over 3 should give us, should give us what 0 0.9 what? 0 0.9 Yeah, so nine, uh, yes, yeah, 0 0.0997, okay, recursive, good. So that is what we get for the sample what? The sample variance, okay, good. So we take notes of that. Any questions on the calculation so far? If you have a question, just raise your hand. I know it should be clear by now, but let's not be over assumptive, okay? So if you have a question, you can raise your hand, let me. Yeah, Joe. <clears throat> yeah, just. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me, yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I please. Can you repeat the the last one for me? I don't know how you calculate and get the zero point one two two five and zero point two two five and all those uh, things. Uh, you yes. can repeat it for me, please, sir. Okay. You are squaring this. You are squaring the values here. Okay. Ah, uh, you've been told to square the values here. So when you take negative zero point three five and you square it, what are we getting? Azuma, I'm working with you. I'm working with you, so you have to come back. 0 0.35 squared will give you what? Yes, Azuma. Hello. Yeah. yeah, zero point the square, the zero point three seven square, three five, and, uh, three three five, five. rather. Yes, zero point three five uh, square. Mm -hmm. Sorry, zero point three five square. Yeah, It'll give you. Yeah. Zero point one two. We can yeah. continue, sir. Very good. So we are okay now. That's okay. That's okay. Good. Any other question? Any other question before we move on? Okay. If there's no question, then 
I want to proceed. Yeah, so that is the calculation for sample, okay, variance. So take notes for population variance, it is minus, uh, minus the mu, and then the denominator is n. Sample variance denominator is n minus one. Okay, so let's clear the screen and proceed with today's activity. Okay, so we talked about what a, st a statist sample statistic is. We said a statistic is a measure, a, a value calculated from what sample data. Okay, uh huh. So what we just calculated is a sample statistic. Whereas when we talk about a population parameter, we are also talking about a value calculated from the entire world population data. Okay. So parameter is for the population and then sample statistic is for sample data. Take note of that. There are many types of uh, uh, sample statistics we can calculate, okay? An example is the single sample mean, which we just looked at. That is denoted as the X bar. Okay, that is a single sample. Then we also have the single sample proportion, okay, which is sometimes represented as P cap or P. Okay, then we have the difference of the sample means, which is represented. So if the means are X1 and X2, then we'll have X1 minus X2, okay. Uh -huh. Will also be an example of a sample statistic. As long as we are calculating using sample data, then the result will be a sample or statistic, okay? Good. That's a key point there. Okay. Now let's look at some few theories regarding this. Um, yeah, this is the example we calculated in class uh, last week. Okay. We did this calculation in class last week. And since we've done one this morning, uh, right now, we can move on to the theories. Now, the key things we need to understand is. Um, since okay x follows a theoretical distribution then a sample from the data okay from the population will also follow a distribution okay good now um, I, I just want to wrap it up quickly so that we go to the aspect of um the computation okay which we really need uh there are some key rules we need to understand the first one is the sampling distribution of the sample mean is a distribution using the means computed from possible random samples of a specific size taken from a population, okay? Then the second thing we need to understand are the properties. First, the mean of the sample mean, okay, is always equal to the mean of the population. Please take note of this. The mean of sampling mean it's always equal to the mean of the population. So it's equals to mu, which is the mean, the mean of X. Okay, good. This is one very important property. And then the second property is we have the variance or the standard deviation of the sample mean. Okay, it's always equal to the standard deviation of the population over the square root of n, okay, good. Which means that if we square it, if we talk in terms of variance, this will look like this. The variance of the sampling mean will be equal to, please look at this carefully, will be equal to the variance of the population over n because I'm squaring, okay? Uh -huh. When I square, uh, when I square, the square will affect this one. And the other square will also affect the square root here. So this square will cancel out the square root, okay? Uh, good. So these are two very important properties. Please, you need to put it down, write it down and let's proceed.
Yeah. I want to believe you are done right to it. Okay, so let's let's continue. Good. So with this rule, we can then say that the sampling distribution of the sample mean, okay, uh, or the x bar, which is the sample mean, okay, can also be a uh -huh. So let me write this first. Since we are saying that the sampling mean has, okay, is also normally distributed. Hmm? The mean of the sampling mean ideally is mean of X bar. Uh, this is what, this is how we are supposed to write it. And the variance is the variance of X bar. Follow it clearly. I know it's a new notation. Eh? And anytime students see new, new notations, <laughs> uh, they, they want the definition for the notation before they understand. So just look at the notations carefully. Good. But because we are saying that X bar, okay, has a mean, uh, the mean of X bar is also equal to what? The mean of X, which is mu. Uh, then we can equally replace mu of X bar with what? With mu, okay? And then because we are saying that the variance of X bar mm, is equal to variance of the population over N, uh, we can equally write sigma squared over what? Over N. Okay, so this gives us a very important word property here, which is X is normally distributed with a mean of mu and then a variance of sigma squared over N. Okay. Yeah, any questions at this point? Any question at this point? This is a very critical state. So if you have a question, please ask before we continue. Don't wait till we move to the next level. If you have a question, please do ask. Any question? Okay. So in the absence of any question, let me move on to the next. Yeah, um, Dennis. Dennis, go ahead with your submission. So why is it that is comma? What the comma mean? Oh, last week you saw that X is normally distributed with a mean of mu comma variance of sigma square. You saw this in class. Uh -huh. So it's the same, that is the notation. This is how we write, it. okay? Yeah. So if you saw this in class, then it means that when it comes to S bar two, it's also going to be. Uh, please. Yes. So what does the, what does the comma mean? Oh, this is just a notation, it's a writing. This means X is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of, uh, and the variance of what? Sigma square, it's a notation, uh, it's a form of writing. Uh -huh. Okay, sir, okay, sir, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, so let me clear the screen and then move on to the next stage. So essentially what we are saying is if we could standardize, now we are going back to what we did last week. Uh, if we said X is normally distributed with mean, mu and variance, sigma, 
squared and we could standardize x into a z standard normal by subtracting the mean eh? this is the mean of x okay uh -huh. so we subtract the mean of x from x and then divide by the standard deviation of x okay not a variance standard deviation this is how we do we did the standardization then in the same way we can also standardize x bar okay as x as z is equal to this is the mean of x bar so it will be x bar minus mu then this is also the variance so you have to find the square root of it so the standard deviation because this is variance standard deviation will be sigma over square root of n you remember i asked you to write it okay. so that will be sigma over the square root of what of m okay good so that is how you standardize the sample mean okay so when we are dealing with the sampling distribution then we standardize using what x bar minus mu over the standard deviation of the sampling distribution which is sigma over square root of n okay uh -huh. but this this quantity which is the denominator of z has a special name we call it a standard error okay we refer to it as a standard it's called the standard error so please take note of that so the denominator is referred to as the standard error okay good Okay. Yeah. So all that we have done is uh, based on one very important theory, which is a central limit theory. Okay, which helps us to guarantee uh, all these formulas we came up with, particularly for the mu of S bar approximating the mu of the post of x and the standard deviation or the variance of s bar approximating the variance of the population over n okay good so which means subsequently in our examples we'll be looking at this form of standardization last week we were looking at this because we were dealing with the process itself now you you notice in our questions we're talking about sample 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 so once you are talking about sample then it means you are going to make use of what the standard form of the sampling distribution good so you take note of that now let's see if we have one question on it you should have your standard normal tables with you Okay, so this is just a summary of everything that I've said. Good. So we have an example here. We are told that suppose a sample of size n equals to 36 is normally distributed. Okay, it's a normally distributed population with a mean of, so let's write this statement first. We are saying that suppose a random sample. So you see the key word is we are talking about random sample here. Eh? The word is sample, okay, as a key of size n equals to what, 36. Mm -hmm. So in this question, sample size is given. If you go to last week's class, you know that you realize that there is nothing like sample, okay? Over there, they tell you the, varia, the process is normally distributed with a mean and a variance. Determine the probability that X, you observe a value that is greater than or less than something. 
here. So in those, the ones we did last week, you will not come across anything like a sample, a sample, okay? Yeah, all we see is uh, just find your probability less than a given value. But here in this example, we have sample and the sample size. So let's write this one in the notation form. So we are saying that X bar or the sample rate, <coughs> sorry, is normally distributed, is normally distributed with a mean of 200 uh, and a variance of what? 400. Okay. And we've been asked to determine the probability, okay, that the sample mean, the sample mean. So once again, you see here you are being told the sample mean, uh, the probability that X bar uh, is greater than 205, is greater than 200 and what? Five. Okay, good. Yeah. So um, we're going to solve this, which means just like we did last week in class, okay, we are going to write this as what? P of Z, uh, we are standardizing. So this will be greater than 205 minus the mean. Eh? You see, you always standardize using what? X bar minus the mu over, this time it is sigma over the square root of what? N, you understand? Hey. So this will be 205 minus the mean is what? 200, then over the standard deviation, variance was given. So standard deviation will be the square root of 400. Okay, it will be square root of what? 400 okay which i believe will be 20 okay that will be 20. so and then we also know the sample size has been given as what as 36. so we have this as um, 20 over the square root of what 36 okay good so if you like, square root of 36 is six. Mm -hmm. So but let's take it systematic. So this will be P, the probability of sets uh, greater than 205 minus 200 will be what, five. Mm -hmm. Then this is 20 divided by what? Divided by six, okay? So do it at your end. Uh, so you need to first calculate 20 divided by six. Mm -hmm. And then when you get the result, you divide five by the results. Okay, so do it at your end for me. So I'm waiting for your answer. So what are we getting, Salim? Yeah, okay, engineer Samoa says 1.5. Okay, let's have some more answers. Okay, so it's 1.5. Yes, um, yeah, Salim also says 1.5, that's good. Yeah, good to know you are working. Uh, Richard has also calculated it, Charles, everybody. Uh, engineer Samoa is now 1.52, it's 1.5 exactly. Yes, okay. So we have the value. Now, like I explained to you in class, okay, uh, the formula anytime you are looking for z greater than something 
okay? Or better still, let me write this part. This simply means we are going to read what? We are going to read uh, let me write this properly. So this means we are going to the probability of Z okay greater than 1.5 okay uh, but like i said in class because the area this time is greater than eh, is greater than and we can only reach less than cumulative distribution less than a, a value okay you remember in class we looked at a greater than scenario mm -hmm. So we've been given the value 1.5, but we look, we are, we want the area greater than the 1.5, this area here. Okay. And like we mentioned in the class, the total probability under the graph is one. So if you want the probability greater than, rather find the probability less than, eh? Come and subtract it from one to get the portion here. Okay, because it is this portion less than plus the portion greater than which us have to get what one. So in other words, this is simply going to be one minus the cumulative okay, distribution. Okay, to point what one point five. Okay, so you should be with your statistical table response. To read 1.50 for me. Yes, uh, Eugene's hand is up. Azuma, I'm not able to tell whether your hand is still up because your hand has been up since you raised it the first time. So if you don't have a question, uh, Eugene. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Yeah, the variance is a square, 400 square roots. And then the number of probability, 36, is also squared. But the formula didn't show that. Come again. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, the variant square roots. Yes, square roots. 400. And, and the number of probability. Variance is the number of Listen. That is n. It's also square. In. Uh, let me clarify for you. Variance is sigma square. Uh -huh. Okay. This is variance. And it's giving us 400. Okay. So if you want, you see this is the formula here. So the formula says it's over standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So you first find the standard deviation, which will be the square root of the 400. Mm -hmm. You find the square root of 400, which will give you 20, okay? So you go and put the 20 here. Are you following? Are you following me? Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Then next, the formula says find the square root of n. Okay. So when you find the square root of 36, square root of 36 will give you what? Square root of 36 gives us what? Oh. I'm waiting for your response. Square root of 36 will give you. Who am I working with? Eugene. Eugene, square root of 36. 